So many people write to us about finding a fun sports car, inexpensive, as we recommend the MX-5 quite a bit. So the best way to get a variation of the MX-5 is to just get another MX-5. This is the Mazda MX-5 RF. It starts at about 30 grand, and for that, you get a fully retractable metal roof that when it is in place, does genuinely improve the stiffness of this car. Immediately switching cars into the Fiat 124. You might think it's the same car, but I don't think so. This car is built in Hiroshima, Japan, on the same assembly line as the MX-5, and only 20% of the car is Italian. It's the engine. It's the same car with a different heart. If you want to make a competitor to the Mazda MX-5, you may as well steal from the best and just use a Mazda MX-5. The 124 Spider was a very successful, well-known model for Fiat. It had a very similar hood shape to this car, so it's reminiscent of that. But let's be candid. This is an MX-5. I'm really intrigued by this as a business decision. How much market share could there be? So this is a true Miata alternative. We're not in an MX-5 in any form here. This is the Toyota 86. It's part of the 86 chassis that's been around for a few years, starting in 2013, what's called the BRZ for Subaru. It was originally called in the US the Scion FRS for Toyota and overseas the GT86. You with me so far? As you know, the Scion brand is no longer so the only badge this car wears is just 86. It's a car that has needs. The two major ones are there's a massive dip in the torque, right in the dead center of the RPM, frankly, the part you use the most. And secondly, the tires from the factory are mostly terrible. But for the same money as a Miata, you can get one of these, a focused rear wheel drive chassis that was only built to be this car. It isn't possible to get this in a convertible. You do lose top down motoring if that's your thing. The car you drive every day should be fun, but it has to do the boring stuff too, like commute, be affordable, and haul your groceries. You can have both and we'll help you find it. Fun to drive cars and great driving experiences for everyone on Everyday Driver. Brought to you by Covercraft. Out of all these three, they all look pretty good, but I think the designers knocked it out of the park. I love the flying buttresses, it, it looks like a more expensive and exotic than it really is. The Launch Edition only came in this gray exterior and this two-tone color interior. Unfortunately, the Launch Edition cars are not the club spec, but they do have every option possible. Same interior as the MX-5. The materials, the build quality, everything is very high quality. And as a matter of fact, this interior feels more expensive than the car is, and I'm okay. Todd isn't gonna fit. I'm as low as the seat will go. I'm as far back as the seat will go. My head is pushed into the roof. I, as a tall guy at six foot three, could buy this and do things to make me fit. But in stock form, I just don't. I'm intrigued by this car. I like the new face. I like what they've done. There was very much an homage to the original Fiat 124. The hood feels really long. The Mazda just drops away and you feel like you're in a smaller car, whereas this does feel bigger. Otherwise, I actually like the styling and with the right size wheels and tires, not this car, I think I'd like this styling better than the MX-5. The original 124, I didn't love either, but at least it had something about it that was kind of cute. This, I don't have an angle that I like. Interior, yes, it's exactly the same, except for the badge, everything else, it's an MX-5. I'm still crowded, of course, because you have to be an under six footer to be comfortable in one of these cars. And that's all that takes. I love it, I love it. Take a look at the front. The clip is different, and I don't think they moved in the right direction. They went worse. They made the car look worse. The car's depressed or angry or constipated, I'm not sure which. Okay, just consider it a minor refresh. The false suede here, the Pioneer radio. Oh, there's buttons on the steering wheel. Other than that, it's old familiar. 
get in this car right after the MX-5 and it feels roomy. It feels like it has a generous amount of space everywhere. All the interior stuff that's good is the stuff that relates to the driving. Beyond that, it's average, but what you should be looking for here is driving. This is not a luxury car. Of all these cars, all three of these cars, I feel like this one is the most fun. This is the same two liter Sky Active engine that you find in a lot of Mazda products, the CX-5, the Mazda 3, and of course, the normal version of the Mazda MX-5. It is a perfectly good, capable, reliable engine that gets great gas mileage. It doesn't have much personality, so of course that hasn't changed here either. One of the nice things about it, in manual specifically, is it is cool to run it all the way to that 6,500 RPM redline. So you want to hang out really high and really work the gears and extract the power of this engine. You're going to have to always think ahead. It's like setting up your next shot when you're playing a game of pool. You're always thinking of the next move ahead. You've got to be thinking about what gear do I need next on this car? Because you don't have all the power in the world here. You can't just decide suddenly you're going to put your foot down and pass somebody, especially with the automatic. The club setup with the manual transmission would probably be a more fun car, but the reason this automatic's here is twofold. One, it was the RF we could get into for the schedule of this shoot, and also because a large percentage of MX-5 are bought with the automatic. This engine is also unique to this car in terms of the Mazda side of the equation, because the Fiat has an entirely different engine. where this 124 makes a name for itself is that engine. The motor is the same one in the 500 Abarth. So even though this isn't the Abarth, the motor is the Abarth, and you can get the 124 Abarth that has four more horsepower on this car, the Classica. It only has 160 horsepower, and you might think, well, the MX-5 is not far behind it at 155. They're entirely different. This is the only turbo car of these three, and you really can tell. In the lower RPM, this is a much more satisfying car to drive. 160 horsepower or 184 pound-feet of torque. Now, to give you a frame of reference, that is about 40% more torque than you get in the MX-5. You can really feel it, and it starts about halfway through the tack, 3,200 RPM. The MX-5 doesn't even get all its torque until 1,000 later. Of all these cars, all three of these cars, I feel like this one is the most fun. The one that I need to make the least excuses for because the power is there. It's not a lot, but it feels like it is. It pulls, it's willing and eager. It's exactly the conversation that we've been talking about for years with the 86. Between four and 5,000 RPM, the car just pulls, unlike <clears throat> some other cars we've got with us. That's a deer. Hello, deer. It must be springtime. There's deer everywhere. This is a two liter Boxer 4, thanks to Subaru, and that means that the engine is very low and very recessed into the car. Packaging is great on this. It keeps the center of gravity of the car very low, and it makes it an unbelievable car in the corners. So for this refresh, Toyota and Subaru decided to finally give this car more power. Five. Five horsepower, five pound-feet of torque. That's it, five. Didn't fix the torque dip, gave us five horsepower. I cannot tell you that 205 horsepower feels faster than the 160 horsepower of the Fiat 124. It doesn't feel that way. Once you're way up in the power band, you've got speed, okay. But the engine makes its power so very differently. The way this engine makes power needs a turbo. It shouldn't be like this. I'm back to ranting about the power and specifically 
the torque dip because that hasn't changed. What happens is that initially, right off the line, you've got a decent amount of torque for a car this size. It only weighs 2,700 pounds. But shortly thereafter, at about 3,500 RPM, it just drops away to really very sluggish. And now, in this 86, it doesn't recover till over 5,000 RPM. Okay, see, 6,500, there's a little bit of power. I can actually accelerate at altitude uphill. At 4,500, I'm not sure I have an engine. Todd has proven when he owned his FRS that you can flash the ECU. You can fix the torque dip. You can put the sport exhaust on. We drove the supercharged version. It fixes the car. It's such a great platform to begin with, and we've talked about it endlessly. Another thing this 86 idea shares with the MX-5 is this is a car that can allow you to learn to be a better driver. Everyday Driver is brought to you by Covercraft, protection for whatever you drive. These are such easy cars to drive hard. But all of the versions of this fourth generation MX-5 lean more than I want them to. There was a purposeful choice on the part of Mazda to take this ND and to give it a lot of body roll. So no matter what speed you're going, you feel the movements of the car, you feel involved, like something's really happening. Yes, the club addresses it a bit, but you generally have to go to the aftermarket to really fix the problem. Oh, it hangs on. But again, the trade-offs here are comfort way higher on the priority list and Mazda knows their customer base. It's so light on its feet. It doesn't pound the pavement in any way. It glides over bumps. You don't feel a thing, as a matter of fact. One of the things that's very important in these MX-5s is how light they are. The penalty for this retractable fastback is a little over 100 pounds. And the whole chassis does gain rigidity. This is a sharper car with the top closed. However, it still has a pocket of major wind noise right here off your ear. Ooh. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the body roll on this car. It's nearly the same. I think because it's lighter, it doesn't exhibit quite so much as the RF, but it leans over a lot through these corners. Let's be honest, the 124 is not a car you really seek out because you want the best sports car on the planet. It's a car you seek out because you want to do this. You want to have a fun blast down a back road. You want to enjoy yourself when you go out at night. You want to take someone special with you and go to dinner or go on a long road trip. And the sensations of the car, this rolling that it does, kind of fools you into thinking, I'm, I'm really doing something here. It's as if Volkswagen and the easy-to-drive nature of a GTI found its way into a traditional classic convertible with a strong engine, and it's just, it's simple, it's easy. You know it. You don't have to learn this car. You can just jump in and drive this car. Like musicians, they just know how to play. We've also talked about what tires do for a car. No other car, in my estimation, really comes to life more than this one does with the addition of good tires. This is a brand new Toyota 86, and so it has those Primacy Michelin tires on it that really don't have very much grip. When you put better tires on this car, you can still slide it around. But what happens is you mostly kill any understeer that the chassis creates, and now you have oversteer when you want it, and otherwise just planted and stuck to the earth. Best part about the car, right off the showroom floor, you can just hang out and chew through corners like very few cars can. Do you feel the potential of this car? They're instantly let down by these underwhelming tires, but you feel what's there. Steering ratio here is 13 to 1, significantly sharper than the MX-5, and actually one of the tighter steering racks being sold right now. 
there is still a lot of sensitivity and feedback through this wheel. And I know that manufacturers will continue to chase the feel of this car by using electric racks. This still is a benchmark in that category and it comes to life with the right tires, it does. Because this corner is flatter than the MX-5, it's also more confidence inspiring in the corners. This 86 in stock form from the factory is the more focused sports car experience. Like the MX-5 though, this is not a car you buy because it is so very fast. It's a car you buy because it is fantastic to carve through amazing corners on your favorite mountain road. The way this car drives on the road is perfect for track and canyons. I still don't want to be in it for just cruising along on the highway. I really don't. Another thing this 86 idea shares with the MX-5 is this is a car that can allow you to learn to be a better driver. Because you can't rely on doing the corner poorly and just putting your foot to the floor and finding speed on the straights, it rewards finding the edges of a corner and hanging on to speed. I think I know how this is gonna go. You do? And I don't think we're gonna agree. <laughs> we usually don't. Has Mazda built the world's smallest GT car? Style, beauty, just cruising. Don't get me wrong, I love this car but I'm having to recalibrate my expectations entirely. My problem with it is, I want the steering and handling feel to be flatter and more aggressive from the factory. That's the reason that the 86 is a chassis that I like so much, because that is its personality. Here you can get a more focused and dynamic steering feel, but you have to go to the aftermarket to do it. constantly searching for fun, lightweight, inexpensive, manual transmission sports cars. I'm curious to see how well this car will sell, and I hope it does. If you really like the MX-5, but you want something a little different and a little bit unique, well, here's your perfect option. I am actually very impressed that Fiat is offering it for the exact same price, essentially, as the MX-5. You can really look at the two of them and just go, which do I prefer? It's willing, it's eager, it wants to please and it's got a better engine. Leave it to the Italians to fix it, right? <laughs> and I suppose because the 86 has been around for a number of years now, I wish it were more. I wish Toyota and Subaru had made decisions to bring us more out of this car. Of course, I like this car. I own the early gen of this car. Not sure that this refresh has really made it a more compelling car. If you're worried about driving first and foremost in the convertible thing you don't care either way, get the 86. If you want the all around, including the convertible, then get the RF. I think I know how this is gonna go. You do. And I don't think we're gonna agree. We usually don't. Okay, was that a foregone conclusion? <laughs> yes. To some degree, we never really agree, but there are similarities here. The greatest similarity of all of these is 25 to 30 grand, you now have options for brand new, rear wheel yep. drive, dedicated sports cars. These aren't chassis that were something else and it become sports cars, they were made True. like this. True, although the list has grown with the 124. It's an option, but isn't it it's just an, an MX-5 in a, in a Fiat suit? You've heard me, I don't think it is because of the addition of the Italian Spice. Really? With the engine alone, I'm surprised at how much it's changed the personality of this car for me. Hmm. I feel like it has a personality over this car. Because when I want this to really speak, I'm lacking more and more. So for me, it's the 124, then the RF because it's so beautiful, okay. and then the 86. The 86 is last because they didn't change anything. <laughs> They did nothing. It needed to be so much more for the refresh. They talked about, we gave yeah. it more power. Five <laughs> whole horsepower and torque, which for a car that you're already complaining about is not enough. 
I have to put that second. For me, it's first, second, third. Really? Because I, I would buy this car if I only fit. This is the right all-arounder. The only reason the 86 doesn't win is because, let's be honest, we do have two convertibles here. If you're a person that wants a convertible, the 86 is off the table. Yeah. I yeah. like the setup of that dynamically better from the factory. I like that in corners better from the factory. I hate the tires, but love it in corners. I can fit <laughs> with or without a helmet. I can just fit in the car. I know that yes. sounds like a ridiculous request, but I am over six feet tall. If you're over six feet, this car is out, but I love it. It can do the convertible thing. It can do the closed thing. Mazda, can you make me a one-off coupe? Just a coupe of this. It's never gonna happen, but that's what I want. Okay. All right, so trade-offs. Not one of these cars is gonna do it all for us. We can't wait to recommend for you on the podcast which yeah. one of these fits your needs. I, I'm really curious. And what a great deal. 25 to 30 grand, real sports cars, brand new. Let's talk. wish for more of an edge on the RF. Just some little thing to differentiate it just from style and beauty and a little bit of weight. I'd rather have the Focus sports car. That's why I want a coupe version of this. But there's a best of all worlds happening in this RF. These cars are different. I won't just call this the reincarnation of the Mazda MX-5. If you were gonna make me choose, I'd take the Fiat. The 124 is a Mazda Miata cover band. It's not the original, it's a riff on the original. And if you've got the option, you want the original. But if this car is still so good, then why aren't we all diving and, and rushing to drive this car? It's good, but you know we're all looking for something more out of it. And it just isn't gonna give it to us. I love this car enough, I own one. Now I own the earlier version, which is more attractive and I would say probably just as good, but this is a great car. You can find great products for your car at Covercraft.com. Plus, free shipping for our audience with the code EVERYDAY.